You may have noticed the noises of the animals this morning. Squirrels chirp, chirp, chirping away. And the cat who wants to get in. I'd like to talk about the squirrels. You may have noticed that when danger comes, one of the squirrels will be a sentinel and will start chirping. But then long after the danger is gone, they can keep chirping away. They can chirp for hours. It's the same with the mind. Someone can say something to us and we can let it reverberate around in the mind for hours. Even though the person has forgotten what he or she said. But we take it and we keep stabbing ourselves with us. So this is a habit we've got to learn to undo. As the Buddha said, when you can make your mind like a broken gong, in other words, it doesn't reverberate, okay, then you're close to nirvana. You sometimes see this when you meditate. You sit down and all of a sudden something that somebody said years back comes up, or something you said years back comes up, and you can't let it go. You've got to keep reminding yourself, okay, that's the past. There's nothing that can be done about that now. You can't undo it by thinking about it. And sometimes, especially if the words were unjust, we use them to stab ourselves because it nurtures our sense of self more than anything else. The, the wronged sense of self is the hardest one to let go. But it's also one of the most useless. So when you find these thoughts reverberating around in your mind, think of the squirrel just sitting there, chirp, chirp, chirping away. The danger's gone, but it's just gone on automatic pilot. No, the chirping doesn't do much damage. When you keep digging up old thoughts and stabbing yourself with them, that does do a lot of damage. So when something comes up, just remind yourself, okay, that's past. I'm a different person now. That person is a different person now. That way you can alleviate a lot of the unnecessary suffering that the mind causes itself. Because that was the Buddha's insight. It's the suffering that weighs the mind down is the unnecessary suffering, the suffering we add on top of things. There may be unpleasant contact at the ear, but we don't leave it just at the ear. People may have done horrible things to us, but we don't leave it there. We take it and we carry it around, and then we suffer. So when these things come up, learn how to tell yourself, okay, I'm a different person now, that was that, was that. that was then, this is now. I have more important things to do. Because otherwise, if you allow that old resentment to stay there in the mind, it can have a big imp influence on the mind when the mind gets weaker. When aging comes, when illness comes, when death comes. If you haven't learned how to think these things through, these things can come and weigh you down and pull you off in who knows what direction. So it's worse than just a waste of time. It's the nurturing of a bad habit. It's not that someone up there is saying this is bad for you, but you should have to remind yourself, you don't need this. This is not doing you any good. There are other things you can be doing right now that do you a lot more good. And when you can think in that way, it helps make your mind more and more like that broken gong that the Buddha was talking about. No matter how much you hit it, it doesn't reverberate. In other words, no matter what happens, the mind doesn't have to cause suffering for itself. That's the kind of mind you want to have. <laughs>